Hello and welcome in. Today's build was inspired by this book nook I made ages ago. I have this old golf ball display rack I got at a Goodwill or a charity shop a while back, so I went upstairs and ripped it off the wall and took it outside to prime. Every good crafting video needs a priming montage. In hindsight, I would have used black instead of dark gray. I knew I wanted some bricks, so I took some old cardstock from cereal boxes and I chopped them up. I also did the same with some styrofoam plates, just to get some different texture and variation in depth. Next thing I did was take the idea out of my head and sketch it on a paper. So let's take a look at this masterpiece. For the next step, I knew I wanted to make some stalagmites, so using the hot glue gun and some toothpicks, we just kind of covered the toothpicks, slather it all over, and let it naturally fall down. This will create a cool texture that looks like stalagmites and stalactites. It's a little bit fiddly and takes some practice, but once you can rip them up off the paper and twirl them around, it starts to look pretty good. And once you've done that, you're going to make a bunch of them. And once you have a bunch of them, we're on to some crystals. For this, we're going to use some XPS foam, one inch thick. And we're just going to cut it into strips. Make sure you have a sharp blade when you do this, otherwise you'll get those weird jagged edges that you don't really want. Once we have a bunch of those, we're going to just chop them down to size and trim off all the corners. This would make good rocks too if you needed to make some kind of stonehenge or something. The only difference is at the end we're just going to taper off the ends and rip them off to make a pointed looking crystal. This first one's pretty gnarly, but as it goes on you can see practice makes perfect and they get a little better. Once you have the crystals done, we're going to take the display shelf and summon our hot glue gun, fill in some of these divots that would hold the golf balls if we were using it for its intended purposes. Be careful when summoning your hot glue gun because if you do it too many times it may start to bleed, but don't worry. Just make a sacrifice to the hot glue gods and all will be well. Next step we did is we took it outside and we filled it with some spackle. This is going to be the ground covering for a lot of the texture of our cave and all that jazz, but it also just makes sure that we fill in those holes. Next we took some aluminum foil and we're going to make a little cave entrance. We're just using this as a base so that we don't waste too much materials. Tin foil is a great crafting material. You should have some on hand. With that done, we hot glued it down and just started hot gluing a bunch of rocks to it. This is all going to be painted later and it'll make more sense. And then once we have the cave entrance looking how we want, we're going to take some of those crystals and stalagmites that we made earlier and just start hot gluing them on. Fitting them in place to make sure they look good and then sealing them down with the hot glue. I knew I wanted some kind of sewer entrance, so I used this old pickle jar lid and some granny grating. Just glued it together and stuck it down. Then I made a door out of some foam. I just carved a doorway and then used a pencil to kind of etch in some lines for the wood planks. And penciled in some texture onto the wood. Glue that down and then there you go. Next thing we're going to use is some bark. Bark's a super valuable tool for all sorts of things. Not only does it make a great wood texture, but when painted correctly, it can look like a great rock texture. That's what we're going to use it for here, just to fill out some of the walls and add some details. All right, cool. Once we have a bunch of those, we're just going to start hot gluing them down, fitting them in like puzzle pieces where we think they might look good. This is going to make an excellent cave wall look once it's all painted up. When we're done with that, we're going to start gluing on a lot of these bricks we chopped up. 
going back and forth between the cardstock and the foam will make some depth to the walls so that they don't just look straight and flat. For some more detail, I knew I wanted some kind of dwarven look to the bottom, so the first thing we did was we busted out some little beads that look like pots. I got these at a Hobby Lobby. Same with these cogs, they're beads as well. And I printed out this bookshelf. Then I started just kind of loosely fitting things before I glued them down to see what they look like. I was pretty happy with this, so we went to town with some super glue and started slapping these beads down. Busted out the bit box, which is a crafter's friend. A lot of these parts were taken from vacuum cleaners and printers I saw on the side of the road and I took apart. Hot tip, get a bits box. I really dug this spring, so I started gluing it down and then a bunch of other stuff. Some little scatter rocks, some of the pots we picked out, and the little bits and bobs and cogs that we stole off of old printers. This is where the build really starts to fill out and start to look like something. At this point, I was pretty excited to get to the painting phase. Found these mini barrels at a Hobby Lobby crafting store, so I thought they'd be perfect for Dungeons and Dragons stuff, so this is the time I busted them out. Quick overview of what we've done so far, and it's time to Mod Podge over everything. We're using black paint and Mod Podge just to paint the entire thing. This will help seal everything down and get it to a cohesive color and ready for paint. So let's check that out. It was at this point the walls were all painted up. So I added some sand, some very fine sand, to the PVA and paint mixture. This is going to make like a texture paste. I'm using that for the floors and ceilings of this build. On to paint, we're just going to use some cheap craft paints for this project. We're going to start by selecting off some bricks and painting them individual colors just to add some variation. Then texturing on with some more colors, we're going to stipple it all over the floor and ceiling. And doing the same with the cave, we're going to switch to blues and purples just to give it a cold feel. And we're just sponging it on, slapping it on, stippling it on, all that jazz. Next onto the stalagmites, we're just using brown and burnt umber, doing a quick wash all over that just to get a base coat down. Hitting the boxes and the wood parts again. Now we're going to take a big dry brush with some dark gray and cover up all the work we did. This is just going to let some of the color show through and we'll go back and do some of the specific colors as we color by number each individual thing. Here's some things I painted off screen, the little bookshelf, and a keep out sign I made. Now it's time for the details. We're going back over some of the bricks, the barrels, the different woods, with some browns. Then we're going to move on to the crystals, which I decided to be purple, because why not? Gonna take some metallic paints and paint the cogs and also hit the sewer. So at this point we start doing some more detail where we paint the little pots that we hid in the rubble, go back over the barrels just to brighten them up, paint over the stalagmites with some burnt umber. Really going for a cartoony fantasy feel on this. You don't want to do that you could do some washes over it later or just don't go so hard on the really vibrant paints next we were going to use some tesseract glow from citadel which is the only expensive paint i used in this build 
I like it because it looks like it's like a glowing slime. I thought that was fitting for a sewer. Next thing we're going to do is bust out some flock. This is a blended tuft that I got from Hobby Lobby. And using some cheap craft green paint and glue, we are going to slather that all over where we want the grass to be and shake the flock on. After we did that, we wanted to take some of that flock mixture and add it to the green glue and paint. And we're just gonna slather that on some of the stones and bricks and parts of the sewer where grime and buildup would be. All of this flocking material can be purchased at a crafting store. I got them from Hobby Lobby. I'm using this bush-like material that I think hobby trained people use for trees to be like bushes on the ground and just add some interest to the top. Last bit of details, we're painting some of the skulls we hid, highlighting some of the rock textures, and just really finishing up. All right, on to the reveal. And there we have it. A golf ball display shelf turned into a cool little miniature display. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Get out there, get to crafting, use your imagination, and until next time, be excellent unto each other. Peace!